Are you tired of mediocre movie nights at your house? Do you want to elevate your home theater experience? Well, look no further. As part of my ongoing basement upgrade project, we selected a Vivid Storm projector screen that perfectly matches our new movie room. In today's video, we'll explain why we selected the screen, show you the simple installation process, and demonstrate how we were able to control this huge screen with Home Assistant. So grab your popcorn and settle in, because we're going to show you how to bring the big screen cinema experience to home for your movies, TV shows, and live sports. In case you're new here, I'm Ryan with The Smart House. We do smart home tech reviews and tutorials. We started a basement remodel project a little over two months ago, with this movie room being the crown jewel. As I mentioned in my project introduction video, we decided to go with a laser 4K projector for this room. We wanted something that would blow people away on movie nights and show watch parties. However, a projector alone cannot provide the full movie theater experience. When we were designing the space, we really had two options. One, we could paint that back wall with a special projector screen paint, or two, purchase a motorized screen. We knew that a thick screen would most likely lead to kid handprints, so we decided to go with a motorized screen. Plus, we can use the area behind the screen for things like pictures, overall saving us a lot of space. So after doing some research, with the help of our contractor who's also an AV buff, we decided on a 120 inch screen for this space. We didn't want to go for a Barney Stinson type screen. It hurts my eyes. Yeah, that doesn't go away. While doing research, it came clear that there were many options to consider when picking out a screen beyond just the screen size. There are options such as short throw projectors, long throw projectors, ALR material, acoustic holes, and even floor rising motorized screens. So I reached out to the team at VividStorm and told them about my project and the requirements. Their customer support provided recommendations based on my requirements and suggested their ALR slimline motorized projector screen. So I just wanna give a quick thanks to the team over at VividStorm for their help and for sending over this huge screen. Now, my current setup down here is pretty rough because we're still finishing up everything. So as I mentioned previously in my introduction video, we've selected the Nebula 4K Cosmos projector for down here in our cinnamon room. Now I've got it currently set up on a stack of boxes in a cart very precariously because my ceiling mount isn't in yet. And of course, right now, everything behind me is being shot during the day. So I'm gonna be cutting in some night shots just to show you what the screen really looks like but it's pretty impressive with all the light in here that you can still make out a very clear image behind me. Now let's quickly go over the features and why we selected this screen in particular. This screen comes with a variety of sizes, ranging from 84 to 150 inches. It has a viewing area of 112 by 58.8 inches. The screen also includes an adjustable header, which lets you set where the screen stops when opening it, so you get just the perfect picture. So this screen has a .08 gain, which at first might sound like a disadvantage, because you might think that a higher gain is better, but typically, the higher the gain, the lower the viewing angle is going to be. This screen has a viewing angle of 150 degrees, so no matter where you're sitting down here, you're going to get awesome video quality. This screen is made out of an ALR material. This material helps cut down on ambient light in your room getting reflected back to the viewer. This is helpful because most rooms are not going to be completely black. You might want to have a decent picture even when the lights are on for a party. I mean, right now, I've got lights on down here, I've got my video light turned on, I've got a secondary light down below, and it's sunny outside and you can still see a pretty good picture on the screen behind me. Additionally, the screen material is easy to clean because inevitably one of my kids is gonna grab the screen after eating a whole bowl of spaghetti with their hands. So it's easy to clean with just mild soap and water. The screen can support projectors with up to an 8K resolution, so you're pretty well future-proofed for the next decade. You can also order these screens with a variety of power options to suit where you might live. Mine, of course, has a six foot North American style plug rated for 120 volts AC. In addition, you can get the case in both white and black. For control options, they give you pretty much every option you'd want. In the box, you'll find an infrared remote, an RF remote, a manual button, and a USB controller. So the design of the manual control box is quite interesting because they actually have the manual buttons on there and the infrared receiver. All of this connects back to the projector with an RJ45 connector. So if you want to use the infrared remote, you're gonna to need to mount the manual button somewhere that you can reach with the infrared remote. The alternative would be to use the RF remote, which should work through walls to about 100 feet away. This is based on 433 megahertz remote technology. Your last option is the included USB controller. If you plug this into a projector that has a USB port on the back and is not constantly powered, then when you turn the projector on, it'll actually deploy the screen automatically. Then when the projector turns off, the screen will automatically close. This is a neat feature to allow you to quickly automate the screen without any additional hardware. But in my case, I decided to go with something else, which we'll look at here in a minute. Now that we've seen all the bells and whistles for this screen, let's talk about installation. Now installing something as big as this screen can be a little unruly, but it was actually quite easy. My screen arrived by FedEx. Thankfully, I was home at the time, 
And you might wanna keep that in mind because when this thing gets delivered, it's gonna be a giant box sitting out in your driveway. So you wanna bring this thing in as soon as it arrives. Though I do have to admit, it would be really funny to see a porch pirate try to make off with a 125 inch long box. I will say the screen is very well packed. Mine had two layers of plastic on the outside, band strapping, and a lot of packing material on the inside. It also had corner braces and edge braces to keep it from getting crumpled. I would just be careful and make sure you check every little box in the packaging. That's where the remotes and all the hardware are located. Now there are three options for installing this screen. The first is using hooks and chains, which would be the choice if you have a really tall ceiling and you need it to come down quite a bit. You can use the included two loops on the top track to connect either directly to an eye bolt or with some chain for additional length. Just make sure you take into account the power cord in the length calculation. For the other two installation options, you can use the included brackets. These can be installed either into the ceiling or into the wall. In our case, we wanted a gap behind the screen for pictures, so we decided to mount it from the ceiling joists. Thankfully, Doug, our contractor, marked these out for us, so it was as easy as drilling some holes and mounting the brackets up into the ceiling. Once your brackets are mounted, you'll need two people to lift and align the screen on the brackets, and then it snaps right into place. After that, just center the screen and secure the set screws to fix the screen to the bracket. That's it. Now all you gotta do is plug it in and you're ready to go. If you do wanna use the included manual buttons or the IR remote, you'll need to secure them to the wall as well. I'm actually gonna use a bit of Cat5 cable and extend ours to the utility room in the back to have it as a backup for the RF remote. In addition, both remotes do include mounting brackets. Now, today's installation is just temporary because we're actually painting this week. If you wanna see the full finished installation, you'll have to wait for the final video in the series. So no video of mine will be complete without a bit of automation. But before we delve into that, just a quick reminder, if you did find this video helpful, please give it a quick like and consider subscribing for more smart home projects and to follow along with this basement remodel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a USB dongle that detects power is included in the kit. Now, this is the easiest way to control your screen. When the projector turns on, the screen lowers and vice versa. But of course, I like to make things a little bit more complicated. So as part of the planning for this video, I had multiple ideas for how to integrate it into Home Assistant. If you want a full video on different options to control your projector screen, let me know down in the comments and I'll put one together. So I decided to use the RF remote to control the screen. Thankfully, the VividStorm remote uses a classic 433 megahertz spectrum for control. This means there are a variety of options on the market to control this outside of this remote. Two off-the-shelf options to control would be the Broadlink RM Pro and the Sonoff RF Bridge. I actually picked up the Sonoff Bridge a few months ago and it's been sitting in a project bin waiting for today. So the really nice thing about the Sonoff is that it supports local LAN control. That means no clouds are necessary in order to lower your screen. You can either set it up to use the cloud to go ahead and grab your API keys, or you can make it 100% local with the DIY mode. I won't go into that one in this video. So I elected to set it up in auto mode where it uses your eWe Link credentials to get the list of devices and their local API keys. Now, according to the developer, the cloud is not required once you get your local keys installed. This is similar to the local Tuya integration, which I've set up previously. So once I set up the bridge on my Wi-Fi and configured the app to pair with the bridge, I created a new device in the application. I selected the three button option and paired each button. It was super fast. All you really have to do is put the bridge in pairing mode and then hold down the button on your RF remote. It's that easy. Once you do that, you can use the app to control. Now, to set up the Home Assistant integration, you will need the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks for short. I have a video how to set it up right here if you haven't done that already. In Hacks, we're gonna click on Integrations, Explore and Download Repositories, then search for Sonoff LAN. Click on it and select Download. Once it's downloaded, you'll need to reboot Home Assistant. Then you wanna go into your Integrations section of your settings and click Add Integration. Find Sonoff LAN and install it. It's gonna ask you for your eWe Link account details, which are only required if you wanna use the cloud or auto mode. Now, if you do elect for the auto mode, it will automatically find all supported devices. So in my case, it automatically found the RF bridge and the three buttons I had already created in the app. Now, you can simply add these buttons to your loveless interface to control the screen, or call them from an automation when you wanna start your projector. Now, I'm actually gonna be building a virtual cover device in the future to integrate all these commands into a single device. And to check the status of the screen, I'm gonna use a door and window sensor to see if the screen is up or down. I'll simply attach it to the bottom of the screen and put the receiver on the back of the screen. Again, if you wanna see a full breakdown on this, let me know down in the comments. So I'll be the first to admit, I'm no expert when it comes to projector screens, but I believe the VividStorm ALR slimline screen is an excellent choice for upgrading your home cinema. With its 120 inch size, ambient light rejection technology, and sleek design, 
it delivers an incredible viewing experience. So if you wanna transform your movie nights and make a lasting impression on your friends and family, I highly recommend considering one of their screens. A big thank you to VividStorm for helping me select the right screen and sending this one over for me to test. Stay tuned for next week's video where we take a look at the Nebula 4K projector that I've selected for our cinema room. You can find it right here when that video is available. If you wanna check out the entire basement playlist, click on this playlist right down here. If you have any questions or wanna share your experiences or suggestions for your home theater, please feel free to leave a comment down below or join our Discord server. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.